So where does the hope? Where, where do I see the, the end of the tunnel or the dawn that I think will break after this long night that we are experiencing? It is very clear after 120 years when I started my talk that this coalition that decided to dehumanize the Palestinians to the extent that they could be forgotten, removed, denied in order supposedly to solve the Western anti-Semitic attitude toward Judaism with which the Palestinians have nothing to do. This project is crumbling, it's collapsing, it's not working. One of the reasons it's so brutal today is because it's not working. If you look at the last years of the apartheid regime in South Africa, the most brutal actions of the regime of South Africa against the Africans was in the last years of the apartheid. They are brutal because they feel that they cannot justify even to themselves the whole project of Zionism. The religious Jews and the secular Jews found out in the last two years since the election of the government in November 2022, they have nothing in common apart from hatred of the Palestinians. They also found out that only, the only thing they can promise their children is another 50 years of bloodshed, conflict, international isolation, and God knows uh, how much economic survival they can maintain in such uh, uh, conditions. So it's collapsing from within. There is an implosion that already takes place in the Israeli society. And a lot of Israeli Jews who have the right passport, who have the right profession, are already leaving. They see no sense in staying in a place, not for their own sake, but definitely for the sake of their children and their grandchildren. Jews around the world began to understand that Zionism is not a panacea for anti-Semitism, it actually is another cause for anti-Semitism. And they begin to jettison Zionism, to distance themselves from Zionism. Yes, it's not a major trend yet, but it's growing by the day. That's why uh, we have the Jewish Voice for Peace and so many Jewish students take place in the protests in the university. So these are processes that each one of them by themselves will not bring an end to the Zionist project in Palestine. But there are discrete processes, and we know from history, they can fuse together to be a very powerful force that would end this project which was wrong morally, strategically, and humanly from the very beginning. I can understand some of the impulse. My parents were saved in a way by being able to come to Palestine in 1933. Otherwise, they would have been exterminated with the rest of my family in Germany. And they were welcomed by the Palestinians when they came. They were not welcomed as invaders, as ethnic cleansers, as occupiers. They were welcomed as refugees who were looking for a safe place. And they betrayed, like everyone else in the Zionist community, they betrayed the Palestinian hosts by saying, we are not, we are abusing your hospitality and we're using it in order to uproot you and to get rid of you. And that's why so many Palestinians were surprised at what happened in 48. They had no inkling of what these group of, this group of people was planning for them and will do to them in due course. So this kind of project is not working. It's not working for a younger generation of people around the world who believe that moral, morality and politics should go together. It doesn't work for a group of people who are now marching and who may be policy makers in the future uh, as a project that brings peace because it just makes the Middle East a far more area of conflict than an area of peace. And it's very clear that this collapse will create a vacuum. And if the, the Palestinian national movement has its own agency here to be prepared for that moment, because if it would be as it is now, disunited, fragmented, it will not be able to seize the historical moment that is awaiting for them in the near future. They will not be able to, to take advantage of the collapse of this project. And this is not just about Palestine. This would, to mind with this, I would end, I, and that comes, brings me back to Binge Bay. This would lead, I believe, I don't know what May thinks about it, but I think that there is a far even greater process in the making here than Palestine. And this is rethinking about the political system that the colonialist powers, Britain and France, imposed on the Mashrek in 1916 to 1918, creating the nation states of Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Israel, these four countries in particular, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel, five, five states. 
They, they were built on a European model, which is called the Westphalian nation state model. This model totally ignored people's aspiration, organic connections, aspir uh, nor normal existence, and especially coexistence. It was really characteristic of this part of the world. And we will have to bring back some of this structure back at the expense of the nation state. And it won't be that difficult because Sy the Syrian nation state has already collapsed. Iraq is also hardly holding on as a nation state. Lebanon has its own problem. So I'm coming back to this world, which I believe we will be able to build. The, the world where our friend's uh, father, Johnny Mansour, from Al Mansoura, a small village that the Israelis destroyed, really very near Binchbane, would go every Sunday in the morning walking to bring the newspapers to the village because that was the nearest place where you could get newspapers when you lived in the Galilee. This is the kind of world that the colonialist Europe has destroyed and the one we will have to bring back. But I do think the first station is to get rid of Zionism and to offer equality for everyone. And despite the Congress decision, I'm calling here for all the people from the river to the sea to be free.